Hey scrappers, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be quite unorthodox, very different to what I usually do. Today I will be deshelling these lithium ion batteries and just showing you the process that I discovered purely by accident on how to remove the, um, I don't know, if I'm not sure, there's conflicting evidence out there, I'm not sure if this is the graphite side or, the, or if it's laced with lithium ion, or sorry lithium. Um, but I'll show you how to pretty much remove this with a very inexpensive and simple um, process. So essentially, and this is an aluminium shell, so and these are cell phone batteries and these came out of a computer. So essentially, and I'm doing it all outside too, so you can understand why, because lithium ion, if you've ever taken a lithium ion battery apart, it absolutely reeks. So, pretty much just unravel it really to expose the um, copper side as you can see me doing here and if you want you can wear a mask the only reason I'm not wearing a mask is because you wouldn't be able to hear me otherwise it would be all muffled so you just remove the copper side and remove all the electrodes and the, the tapes just to clean it up a little bit you put that aside oops and this aluminium side as I said I'm not sure yet or I haven't found a, an expensive way to remove the graphite slash lithium from this side so I'll hold on to it all for now until I do and um, put that over there and just put the divider over this way and essentially with these ones these are also aluminium but they're wrapped in plastic so you just take your scissors and then essentially the same way just peel it all back you know nice aluminium laced plastic piece so I can just go my you know like your tin foil type aluminium and then we just carry on unraveling it like we did the last lot Again, here we go, there's the aluminium side, so I can just go there, we'll remove the insulating layer, and we're left with a nice long strip of copper. And also, depending on the life of the battery, like if it's a really old battery, and you can feel it through the um, plastic as I'll demonstrate to you shortly so you get a nice whatever sorry copper um, see how that's nice and firm it's not crunchy or anything like that now the reason I say that is if you look down here just below the grate see you get all these flaked off pieces that usually happens when the battery is really really dry and swollen and it can make quite quite a mess so just you know be aware of that and again same process just cut through it making sure of course again that the battery has been discharged and is you know relatively flat otherwise you could risk starting a fire and then simple simple carry on process again we just well this one came apart a little bit worse for wear but then we do the same thing Unravel it, control the copper alloy. This one's a little bit weirdly stacked. It's actually like kind of like almost plated, not um, convoluted like the other, the other lot is. Kind of weird. So this is really weird guys, this, this is not the conventional lithium type battery that I'm used to or like you saw in the last two, three It's almost like they've interlaced the copper and the aluminium internally between the plates rather than 
having them separate and insulated if that makes sense so yeah they've amalgamated the copper so this might be a little bit more tricky um, to do as you can see here I'm not sure now which is the aluminium which is the copper but not to worry I'll carry on see what I mean see can you see it smoking so you need to be careful when working with aluminium, uh, aluminium with lithium because it's a very it's a highly reactive metal especially when it comes in contact with oxygen you know, atoms don't forgive as easily as people do. So I'm just trying to peel off what I think is the copper plates. Um, and then we'll put them aside. And also if if you're going to strip out a whole bunch of lithium like this, well, sorry, not a whole bunch because there's you know, barely um, anything, but I would also recommend leaving it overnight in a steel bucket outside. That way, if there is any reactants overnight, it can do its thing and it won't. Um, and of course, leave the bucket away from any flammable materials. So that way, if it does combust, it will do so and it won't melt the bucket or anything like that, it'll just do its thing and then burn out. So, hopefully this is the last little bit. And they're actually quite dense, these these type, these type plates. For some reason they're actually a lot um, heavier, so to speak, than what uh, that other lot was, like the cell phone batteries. So there you have it guys, it's all stripped. Um, so what I'll do, oh no, we've got another one left. So what we'll do next is continue to strip this out. Right, so that all can go aside because this is the aluminium side now. So I'll do a quick clean up and then we'll get on to the next process. Hey guys, welcome back. So the next process is a simple bucket of water. And what I found was if you put the copper plated side into the water and let it soak for a little bit, it doesn't take long at all. Um, as you can see, we have some reactions going on, starting to bubble, especially on this side. Um, Just leave it for a couple of minutes. You add the bigger plates and you'll see it'll start to get all murky and like it is now. See how it's starting to fizz and kind of bubble? So that's the reaction of the lithium, I think. I think there's lithium on the copper side too, but don't quote me on that. I think there's more on the copper, sorry, on the aluminium side than there is on the copper side, but there is still on the copper side nonetheless. So we leave those in here for a few minutes. See, as you can see, straight away even. See, all, almost all stripped off. So we leave those in there for a little bit longer. Just to get all of the lithium slash graphite off the copper plate. And you're left with a decent amount of, of copper plate. Um, and if I can't, See? All stripped off already. Beautiful. Same with this. It's all done almost. 
And if you want, you can get like a little squeegee spray bottle. Just stand here and do it like um, they do in the gold recycling or recovering videos. And just to get all your last little bits and contamination up. But this will burn up in the furnace anyway. Um, and here we go. We got some more copper plates. Fantastic, fantastic. We just you know put a little bit back in that you're not happy with the done the result Oop. sorry I don't mean to my net and my Neanderthal approach to stirring the water with a wooden stick but I don't have any other stirrers at the moment they've all got copper melted to them so there you go for those of you who are interested and I just stumbled across this simply by accident um, when I started taking apart lithium ion batteries. I left it outside by accident. Well, actually, it wasn't by accident. It was to stop it from trying to catch fire because I heard the rumors that lithium and I saw the evidence of it happening too. And so I left it outside overnight and I came out the next morning and like, why is all this you know, peeled off the copper side? But nothing. All, all that happened to the aluminium side was a bit of corroded. Nothing happened on the alloy, but it was all like this, beautifully stripped out on the copper side. So I thought, okay. So I tried it again, like I am doing now for you guys. And same result. In fact, it works even better with tap water than it does with water from nature, so to speak. I assume because there's chlorine, quite possibly fluoride, there's a reaction as well. With all of that too and if you know I, I speculate I don't know for certain because you know I don't have any tools to analyze that the process of it stripping the um, graphite slash lithium off the copper side not that there is I mean it's a known fact that there's fluoride and chlorine in a tap water well there is here in New Zealand anyway so Leave that out there to dry for a little bit. So you always get the last little stubborn piece of for some reason this needs a little bit more, more soaking before it comes off. I mean it's not even budging as you can. Oh there we go. So yeah, it needs a little bit more soaking. And then we'll be good. So if you guys want to do this with your lithium ion batteries, as I say, please be careful, take the appropriate precautions um, because you might stumble across the, just that one lithium battery that might not be reactive, sorry, that might be highly reactive, you know, the first 10 that you did weren't, and you know, you're like, oh, okay, this, this won't happen to, to me, and then all of a sudden you do it and it catches fire, even worse, explodes in your face. So just be careful, take the precautions, wear a mask if you like, and do it in a well ventilated area. So we'll leave this to soak for a little bit longer, it's coming off slowly, but surely. Um, and, I, and this might be my last video, just letting you guys know, keeping you in the loop so to speak. The reason being is simply because I'm running out of ideas, not running out of scrap anytime fast, but just running out of ideas. Um, I say that because you know there are thousands of other scrappers like me and like you guys too out in the world doing the same exact thing and I'm a bit fearful that eventually we're all going to start if not already you know overlapping and doing the same scrapping thing just with a different um, approach but there's only so many ways you can reinvent the wheel before it becomes erroneous you know what I mean so if you don't see or hear from me, that's the reason why. Unless you guys have some ideas on what you'd like to take, see me take apart. I mean, they could be long videos, they could be short videos, like this one. I'm happy to do it. I mean, I don't mind making long videos. It's just that not a lot of people are interested in long videos, especially of the same um, thing. Like I'm, I'm going to start doing some melting videos, I just got to wait for summer because it gets real dark here in New Zealand. You know, around 5 o'clock, 5.36, it's pitch black. 
and I got to be, you know, courteous of my neighbours too because you don't want to hear that um, noise all the time because it is very loud. It's, it's pretty much like a turbojet engine, constantly on low, on low power. So I hope this was a bit of fun for you all. Thank you for joining me. Um, any ideas or things that you'd like to see me take apart, please leave in the comments. It would be greatly appreciated. Look after yourselves, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers.